Good morning, my gardening friends. Welcome to Tea Time Tuesday. I'm Lark, and I'm in Wisconsin, Zone 5. And I am going to give you an update on my raised bed gardening in my senior living community. For those of you who don't know what it, this is, I'm showing you, this is our wetland area that is adjacent to the uh, fenced-in raised bed garden, gardens. I have some in the ground too, but mostly raised bed. These are my herbs that are outside the fence. This used to look like that wetland over there with all the uh, wild flowers and weeds. I have peppermint. I have um, some stinging nettle I brought from my other house because I wasn't aware that I had stinging nettle all in that wetland area. It's wonderful. Stinging nettles in there and elderberry. So I have a stinging nettle. I have the white wild yarrow and some lavender and sage. There's some uh, creeping thyme, horseradish. Those big leaves there are horseradish. And I know some of you are saying, oh wow. That's invasive. But aren't all our herbs, peppermint, spearmint, yarrow, all aggressive. There's spearmint in there too. And I planted some St. John's wort this year. I'm hoping it takes over in there. And uh, plantain is in there. And, uh, what? Oh, oh my gosh, that's the blue heron. You might have heard him. Okay, here's my garden. I add a little water feature because I'm hoping it keeps the birds from pecking on my uh, tomatoes. I heard when they really need to be hydrated, they will peck on cucumbers, tomatoes. So I made sure I give them clean water every day. So in here I have romaine lettuce and some Swiss chard. I have the red and I have the, the white. I planted a succession planting of romaine. So I will be on a cool day. When it gets down in the 70s more, I'm gonna be transplanting that. There's also spinach in there. I cover it with chicken wire so the chipmunks and the birds kind of stay out of it. They don't totally stay out of it, but they kind of stay out of it. Then while I'm here along the fence, I planted in the ground some green beans, a succession planting of green beans. I'm having trouble, it looks like, with slugs. But that ground isn't ideal there. It's very clay-like. And then over on this side of the fence, I have uh, some borage coming up and some, um, oh, what is that called? I forget, some weeds, dandelions for sure. So I'm using this netting this year, very fine netting, insect netting for my uh, brassicas and it's keeping them nice and clean. And I've harvested two heads of broccoli and I have a third coming up here. Here's my, can you, I hope you can see through the netting. The leaves are a beautiful blue green color, nice size. I have uh, intermittent, in, yeah succession planting of romaine and some more kale and my big kale and I'm hoping to harvest that stuff until a hard frost. 
my succession planting of parsley, Italian flat leaf, some more um, Swiss chard, and chives in the ground out of there. I did plant one more uh, succession planting of parsley right in there, and I put the, the spiky things over it so the rodents and birds don't seem to go in there, but I don't see any seeds coming up. You can see that I planted it on the uh, more of the west side of this planter, and the flat leaf parsley here is shading that area. So we'll see if it even comes up. More chives across the bed here. Carrots. Now, I forgot to tell you, this bed here gets shade in the afternoon. A lot of shade. So that's good. It seems to be doing good because it gives it a break from that intense sun. And that bed there gets shade also, but not as much. So everything is getting a break with this intense heat we're getting in Wisconsin. Today, um, 92, I think. So this bed here gets full sun. And I have my carrots growing in here. And I've, I've harvested maybe um, 40 so far. I pull them a little early instead of, I try to plant them um, a little farther apart, but I drop too many seeds, so I thin them and then I eat them. And it gives the carrot uh, around that area that I thinned time to grow bigger. And it seemed to have worked for me. Succession planting of uh, sweet basil. And I had romaine in here, which did well because it was shaded in the afternoon by the uh, big tomato plants here. But it's almost done. I cut it off at ground level, and then I see it's coming back. A little bitter, though. Just a, a experiment to see if I can get more out of it. I got a few cosmos coming up here little color and then my green beans just starting to come on and then some barrage yes I eat the flowers we put them in our salads but mostly uh, for attracting pollinators tomatoes are doing excellent I do not take off the suckers unless they get unruly, but I want more tomatoes. So um, I don't care if they aren't as huge as uh, they could get with taking the suckers off. So I leave the suckers on and I thin the leaves. So there's air circulation. So here I've thinned the leaves. Here I'm going to be thinning some leaves because the suckers are starting to grow and make, uh, make it more dense. I use and have used these are about I'd say at least 25 years old these towers these are made with concrete reinforcement uh, mesh and then I stuck a, a tomato cage up on top to give me even more height so let's go down this way I decided to put oh my gosh how did something get in there Hmm. Can you see that disturbance of the soil? That wasn't there yesterday. So they must be getting under. Oh yeah, right there. He got under. Something got under, a mouse or something. So I put the netting over because I didn't want them digging in here. I put succession planting of cilantro and then some beets. Two rows of beets and then my peas sugar snap they used to be on that trellis there concrete reinforcement mesh but now I got a tomato there so now my succession planting is here we've had a, a good week of 90s 
or near 90 so we'll see how they do then another uh, cucumber over here but um, that's in ground and that soil isn't good so we'll see how it compares to my cucumber that's on in a raised bed experiment this year and I keep amending the soil in the ground so this green bean planting now shades the tomatoes a little in the morning and that's okay so the other side of the bed here I have well I have three tomatoes I have a Juliet two Juliets one I started from seed in case it got a fungus this one here is uh, a Juliet also but I like to um, oven roast the tomatoes after I cut them in half and take out the seeds and then freeze them. That's the easiest for us in this uh, senior living community because I have smaller everything in the apartment. I do, oh I forgot to tell you, I do put uh, some of these mesh bags like onion bags or uh, from my avocados to help deter the chipmunks from eating them or the birds from pecking them. Hopefully they it works. Over here they don't do it. So we'll see. We don't have as many chipmunks this year. And that's a good thing. So over here I planted my tomato and I, this is a, a a beef steak and I started that from seed and then I just said oh why not I planted a few more peas sugar snap peas along this fence line next to the tomato and it can intertwine with the tomato so that's it on the fence sorry for the glare And our prairie is down yonder there. And it really needs water, but prairies are drought tolerant, so we'll take a look at that another day. So my third raised bed has a flat leaf parsley, a succession planting. Let's see, I started that in about April, I think. And it's doing okay. It's coming to an end. I'm letting it part of it go to seed so I can collect some seed. My dill, early dill, and I planted another uh, succession planting of that. I like it in salads. I might uh, try uh, doing beans, uh, dilly beans, or pickles, or both. We'll see. My lettuce that I had. A type of romaine excellent so I'm letting it go to seed one plant and my cilantro is going to seed so I can use that seed cucumbers are the same that are on the fence much healthier that's no surprise to me but um, I'm just trying to use all the space I can so on the fence works because I like to uh, share with people so again, I use a concrete reinforcement and towered it up with uh, a tomato cage. Use zip ties to hold them together. This is a volunteer sunflower that I didn't have the heart to uh, pull out, but next year I won't allow it because I'm guessing it must take a lot of nutrients out of the soil. I'm letting the... Uh, I'm letting the uh, cucumber crawl up it, taking the big leaves off. Every day I take another big leaf off and uh, let the, we'll see what the smaller side shoots do. If they flower, good, very good. So I'm letting it meander on the ground too. We'll see what it does.
that is a straight eight, I think. Or no, mark it more. Mark it more. Oh, it's so nice. Can you see how my uh, straw has worn down? But it's working good at holding the weeds down. You can see the cardboard showing through now. I let uh, Paul know, our maintenance guy, that I could use four more bales to get ready for winter. So whenever he has them. These are nasturtiums that are coming back from last year. I must have dropped seed when I pulled them out. They're the variegated kind. I happen to like eating the uh, Indian Empress, I think it's called. They're more of a blue-green leaf and a dark red-orange flower. A little, little healthier with the dark green. My basil doing fantastic. I am trying something new with the basil. I pick it and uh, trim it back and I wash it, let it air dry on a towel and then I'm flash freezing it. Thin layer, put it in the freezer and then put it into a baggie. Hopefully um, it gives me uh, at least a, more flavor than dry basil when I'm cooking. My peppers, eh, I don't know. They aren't putting on peppers too abundantly. The, the cayenne is. This one is. Okay. But this one here, not yet. I see flowers, so I'm growing more borage on this fence here. See if it helps. What else over here? More basil. Lots of basil. But I, I share, too. I have purslane on the fence, and I eat that usually daily in a salad or in my bone broth. And I, um, letting it, I'll let it go to seed, because I don't know. I have to do some uh, Googling to see if it is a perennial or if it just reseeds freely, which... It does. I know it recedes if it goes to flower. It's a weed. Onions. This is the first time I'm growing onions here. They seem to be doing good. I forgot to split that one up. But they're, they're doing okay. Keeping them watered. I fertilized several times. I am fertilizing with uh, an organic, I think it's called Garden Tone. This is my uh, nasturtiums. And then my succession planting of dill. Hoping that it gets a little taller before this cucumber totally devours it. Cucumber's doing good crawling up here. It's behaving. And I do thin some of the leaves off too. This pepper here, right from the beginning, was getting eaten. So I do keep some soapy water out here, and I did give it a, a treatment of soapy water. And it seems to look better. But again, you can see it's being shaded by the onions. I'll know better next year. So on the fence line, I have calendula. And most of you know, my regular people that come back, that uh, I use it for uh, skin cream, body butter, um, an oil, infused oil. And it's coming very nicely. Again, the soil isn't great, but uh, it's doing okay. Uh, I'll, I'll mend the soil again this year. Now, some of you from last year knew that uh, I didn't have this in-ground area. It was a mess. It was weedy. And I uh, took it over. Nobody wanted it. So I put a squash in, a small one. It only gets, like the squash only gets about six to eight inches. No, not even eight. 
it's about six seven inches then I also put in uh, some more tomatoes because people here like tomatoes so I am sharing I have a, a early girl and I also put some uh, onion bags on or avocado bags another Juliet now it is a nice size this cherry it's a cross I think between a cherry and a um, Roma and that's why I like using it to uh, roast is it's not as juicy as the little ones put in rosemary and lemon verbena which both of those I will winter inside down in our basement we have some grow lights just enough to keep it living more basil not doing as well as the basil in the raised beds and I'm guessing this experiment is because there's a lot of clay and rock in this soil and I did not amend it time of planting I put in fertilizer and uh, that was it so if I have it next year I'm gonna be covering this in leaves so we have I said an early girl this is a big beef and it's going to be interesting if it drops its uh, some of their flowers with this intense heat more barrage this calendula on the end probably gets more water that's why it looks even better than some of them barrage is such a pretty plant and then my St. John's wort And I'm going to mend the soil around there a little. Even though it grows in disturbed ground, I don't want it uh, competing with all the bark that's in there. More rosemary. So that's it, my gardening friends. That's my garden. I'll give you an overlook of some of... Um, the other beds here doing super I mean this is the best it has ever looked they finished the granite on the paths so can you see over here they finished the granite looks good everybody's gardens doing good keeping up with the weeds pretty good uh, we ran out of that vinegar that Dave uses to weed this area uh, I think it's 30 percent 30 percent vinegar to kill the weeds so you can see that they're very hardy but uh, it's coming he said so Dave's gonna have a job getting uh, the garden gravel looking good again looking good this is our cutting garden and yep I cut flowers at least weekly at least once a week red leaf amaranth zinnias I think they have some dahlias in here some cosmos ageratums snapdragons over there some celosia and sunflowers sunflowers I find don't cut real good so I wouldn't do those again if I were them a lot of people growing cherry tomatoes we're gonna supply all 350 of us I think 
maybe even the nursing home part. Ageratum's cut nice. It's a tall variety. Snapdragon's cut really nice. Uh, they have status. I like that. I think it's called status. Dries well. And some kind of little drumstick plant. I like it. But I'm not a pink fan, so I'm going for more of the burgundy ones. Isn't that nice that we have that? Our bocce courts over there. Some people grow in pots. They just want a couple pots. And then nobody wanted this bed here. So guess who took it? Lark. Uh, another resident here didn't want an indeterminate tomato. So I put it in. It says Huskers Red. I grew it at my house, and I liked it. Uh, it's not an heirloom, I don't think, though. And then some uh, Swiss chard must have reseeded here. I cover in cardboard because I didn't have enough straw to hold the moisture in, and uh, so I don't get splash. In there, in that little area, I planted some spinach seed. Spinach seed that somebody had spinach growing in here and I let the plant dry Now before I took the plant down it wasn't completely dry, so I don't know if the seeds are going to be good So I take care of that one too Nice fleshy plant though huskers red Scarlet runner bean really attracts the beans and the bees and the hummingbirds. So this is all gravel now. Don't look at our weeds on the ground, okay? I am not about to pull them. My hands won't take it. I have enough doing that bark area where my herbs are and my straw paths and area around my raised beds. So take care of my gardening friends and thank you so much for understanding why I don't come every week. I don't want to bore you terribly, but this is my happiness. This is my happy place, besides painting. Uh, this is my seasonal hot happy place. Take care, and I hope you're having a good summer, staying healthy and happy, and make it a good day. Bye-bye.